So TMZ obtained this now deleted video of a fight during Olivet Baptist Church's Sunday service. It shows a man walking up to the front row of the pews. He then begins punching another man. That brings the pastor's sermon to a halt. Well, today we learned this did lead to an arrest. Jamia Reed has more on that and what led up to the fight. Jamia. Josh Kim, Mount Olivet Baptist Church had their typical Sunday service. Their live stream was up and everyone was enjoying the post Christmas service. And then things went south. It started out as a typical Sunday church service on the day after Christmas. Isaac was the son of a promise. It quickly took a turn when one church member can be seen approaching a pastor in the front row. We saw his star in the east, and we have come. This video, shown on TMZ, captured the punches inside Mount Olivet Baptist Church in Chattanooga. Let's watch that again. On the bottom right of your screen, you can see the man in a white t-shirt and mask walk up to the pastor in the front row. The pastor swings and misses, and then the fight continues off screen. After the video quickly went viral, Pastor Kevin Adams took to Facebook Live to address what happened. A wonderful young man, I think the world of him. According to Adams' Facebook post, the church member is going through a difficult time in his life. Just had some issues, some problems, just left rehab, just left rehab. All of us go through stuff. Chattanooga police arrested Marcus Williams and charged him with assault. As soon as the young man got back in the fellowship hall, he began to cry. He was so sorry about what he did. It was almost like he didn't even know he was there. Uh, but the damage had already been done. But Pastor Adams says it's all about forgiveness. We're going to see the young man through. Uh, he's going back, I understand, to rehab. And we're going to walk with him through that process. The arrest affidavit for Williams says he also injured a security guard who tried to escort him out of the sanctuary. People traveling this holiday season, we went to find out some key tips to keep your home safe from burglars going in. Front door, this allows us to lock and unlock the door. When it comes to keeping thieves away, sometimes you gotta outsmart them. You want it to look like your home even when you're not. Zach Cobb and Ryan Matthews work for eSecurity Tech, a Chattanooga surveillance and security company. If you have a vehicle that's spare, that's normally sitting outside, make sure it stays outside. Don't run it into the garage because then that just poses, hey, no one's home. They say you should also keep a couple lights on and use some common sense when you're making your trip plans. First tip is not to uh, talk to anybody about it. Right, don't post on social media that you're going out of town or anything along those lines. But if you're going to engage anyone, make it a trusted neighbor. They can help you avoid telltale signs of being away, like mail piling up. Have your neighbors come in, you know, check your mailbox, just kind of walk around the house too. And if it's in the budget, they recommend investing in a security system especially one that can be accessed remotely. So if these people are going out of town for vacation, that they can, you know, be at their parents' house miles away from their home and be able to view what's going on at home or arm or disarm the system. Before Richard Steele became the chaplain for the Whitfield County Jail, he was a missionary. He traveled to 19 countries and helped build churches, schools, and medical facilities. Now he's building relationships with people who are incarcerated, giving them hope this holiday season. It happens every year. The congregation at Fellowship Bible Church in Dalton coming together for a holiday tradition. These pictures capturing the smiles as they stuff hundreds of boxes with food and furry socks. They were delivered to the Whitfield County Jail Christmas Day and given to every man and woman in 19 cell blocks. A few years ago, Phyllis Young says her mother passed away around the same time she was arrested. It was a low point in her life until Chaplain Richard Steele stopped by the jail to visit with the inmates. And he came and actually talked to me and he's always just so uplifting and kind and he's just a really good man. For the last 30 years, Chaplain Steele has visited with inmates once a week, breaking down barriers and building up people like Phyllis. Well, I just learned that there's always a the right way to do things and if you don't do the right thing, then you have a consequence, unfortunately. And and I'm glad for my consequences because it's brought me where I am today. I'm two years sober and I have a good life. I have great family, a good support. And she says it's a good time to thank Chaplain Steele for his commitment to people often misjudged or forgotten. Good morning, Chaplain Steele. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So from News Channel 9 and 
McMahon Law Services. We want to give you this money. Hold your hand out. One, two, three, four, five. For all that you do, and, and you've helped so many people in this community, and you've been so good to me in the past, and I, we just appreciate you so much. It's been my pleasure. Yes. It really has. <laughs> Chaplain Steele says he considers his years of volunteerism at the Whitfield County Jail an honor. I think one of the hardest things for somebody who's been incarcerated is to forgive themselves. And they, they remember they carried around with them, but we said, God's forgiven them. And the system forgives you. You're a free man, a free lady. Okay. <laughs> Giving them hope for a new way of living.